Hello and welcome. My name is Angie Holden and I'm the blogger behind The Country Chic Cottage. Today we're going to talk about three ways to print to your sublimation printer using free software that is not Cricut Design Space. So what I'm hearing from you is that you're trying to use Cricut Design Space to print to your sublimation printer and you're frustrated by not being able to get any larger than 6.75 by 9.25 inches. So let's use other free options to print to our sublimation printer that are not Cricut Design Space and do not have those limitations for print sizes. What are we gonna use? So we're gonna use Google Docs, Canva, and Silhouette Studio. Those are both three free options that I'm gonna use the completely free version of each one. And I'm gonna show you how to print both just a regular sublimation design, how to resize it and print it. Then I'm gonna show you for each one how to use a template in each one to get the right size for things like your 20 ounce tumbler. So let's first start with Google Docs and take a look at how to print to your sublimation printer. So let's take a look in Google Docs. So you, first of all, you'll open a new Google Doc and then you want to insert an image. I like to do that by going insert, then image, then upload from computer. Then you just find the image on your computer. Here's the image I uploaded from my computer. So we're gonna do this a few different ways. First is if I just had an image and wanted to print it. What I like to do is click the image, right click and do image options, then click text wrapping and do in front of text, then size and rotation. Here I can size this to exactly what I want to print. So let's say I wanted a three inch by three inch piece. If you wanted to distort the image, you could unlock the aspect ratio and it would distort it. I do not wanna do that, so I am going to leave it at three by three and the image locked. If you size the image any larger than it comes in, so if this is over 100%, you do risk it being pixelated when printed. So I don't recommend going over 100% if you can help it. Now that I have it as a three by three, I could copy this. So we'll right click and do copy, then right click and do paste. Then we can pull the second one over here and I can print multiple pieces on one piece of paper. And I can continue to do that for as many copies as I need and continue to fill up the entire piece of paper. Now I am working with an eight and a half by 11 size document. If you find that your images are not fitting, you can get a little bit of extra space by going to file and page setup and reducing the margin size. Now you can't really reduce these to zero on most sublimation printers, but you can reduce them a little bit and that will allow you a little more printable space on your document. A lot of sublimation printers will allow you to print eight and a half by 14 inch prints. So go to page setup, click whole document, and you can find eight and a half by 14 here and click okay. If you wanna get an overall view of your page, you can click here and you could zoom to fit or you could zoom say 50% to see the entire page. And now I can see my page and continue filling it up. Once I'm done with my design and ready to print, I'll go to file and then print. I'm gonna run through the print options both on my converted Epson EcoTank as well as my Epson F170. So on my Epson EcoTank that I've converted for sublimation, I would click more settings here. I would make sure my paper size matched whatever I had. So if I had changed it to eight and a half by 14, I would change that here. I always make sure that my scale's at 100% just so it does not zoom in or zoom out when printing. And then we'll wanna print using system dialog, so we'll click that button. Again, I'll choose my EcoTank and click preferences. Make sure it's a matte paper setting, high quality. Under more options, I'll make sure high speed is off and that mirror is on. Then I can click okay and I can click print. I can print as many copies as I would like. Now back on this printing preferences menu before you print, if you wanna do any color correction, you can do manual color correction with Google Docs. And I do have another video on how to do that. And I will link to that into the description below. But you would pick color correction custom and follow the instructions on that video to do a manual color correction. This does not support ICC profiles, but you could do the manual color correction. Now, if I wanted to print using my Epson F170, I would pick it as my printer click more settings, May, again, make sure this was 100% and that this matched the size of the paper that I have picked in the Google Doc. Then again, print using system dialog box. Then again, I would pick that printer and click preferences. This time I can do color correction because it's built into the F170. So I would pick either rigid or textile depending on what I'm supplementing on and that would change my colors accordingly. Then I would make sure that quality is high Go to more options, make sure bi-directional is off, 
and that mirror image is on. There are a few other settings that you can play with if you're having issues and I cover those in my F170 video and I will link to that in the description below. But once I have all of those settings picked, I will click OK and then I would click print. Now what if I wanted to print something like a Tumblr wrap? Well the first thing I would do is to again insert my image and this time it would be something that would be large enough for a Tumblr wrap. So this is just an all over patterned paper. Then right click the image, image options, text wrapping in front of text. And then I would make sure this fills as much of the page as possible. And again, I probably will get over 100% here. So the template I'm gonna use is 8.3 by 9.5. I don't wanna distort this pattern at all. So I'm gonna make it the largest dimension, which is 9.5. And this will go over 100%. Hopefully it won't be pixelated once I do this. Next I'll do insert image and upload the template that I've downloaded from a website. Now the template comes in behind my image. So I'm gonna go ahead and click the template. I am going to do in front of text. Now we'll click the image and click behind text. That brings the template to the front. Now the template did get resized when I put it into the Google Doc. So now if I go to size and rotation, we can see it is not the right size. So first of all, we will want to rotate it 90 degrees and the height needs to be 9.5 inches. Then we'll resize it to 9.5 by 8.31. And that is the right size for the template itself. And as you can see, my template is still hanging off. That is because I don't have my margin small enough. So we're gonna go back to page setup you will have to go to 0.1 on both the left and the right margins to get the entire thing on an eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper. And then you can see your margin is over here. Have your image and your template are still shifted. So we're going to pick first the template, move it over to the margin. We can now see it's perfectly lined up with the margin and the margin is equal on both sides. And then we'll pick the image and again, move it to where it's within the template itself. Now, if you just print this like that, this, the black box would print, but you don't want the black box on your print. So we are going to crop the image itself. So we will click the image. We're gonna do format, image, crop, image. And now the crop box appears and we can move the crop box to the template that we have put onto the screen. So we move everything to the template. Make sure the bottom is on the template and it is. Then just click enter. Now our image is cropped to the template. So now we can click the template and backspace to delete it. And now the image is sized perfectly to fit with the template. Now we can print in the same way as we did before for the other images and use this as a Tumblr wrap. So there's a few different ways to print with Google Docs for sublimation printing. Next up is Canva and I am using the free version of Canva. And what I would do is click create a design and then I would do custom size and change this to inches. Then put in the size of the paper you're using. So I'm gonna use an eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper. If you were printing on eight and a half by 14, you would put that here and create new design. Then you would click uploads, then upload whatever you want to print to Canva by finding it on your computer. Click upload media to do that. Then you just click on what you've uploaded over here on the sidebar and it puts it onto your paper. Now it will come in at a certain size, but we will wanna resize that. So we can resize that and you can see the height and width numbers come up as I resize it. So again, we'll make this like a three by three, and then you can move it around by just dragging it. To copy it, you can right click and do copy, and then right click and paste. Then we can move those around. Again, copy and paste as many times as we would like, and fill up the entire page with our sublimation design. So let's say we wanted six to this page, and we're gonna print all of those together. Now you can name your design here and it will automatically save it. When it comes to printing, you can't actually print in Canva. You will need to download it. So we'll click share, then download. And then I would download it as a PDF print, which is good for printing, and click download. You can also download this as a JPEG or a ping if that works better for you. Once it's downloaded, you'll open it up and click print. 
This is the way PDFs open on my computer. Once again, let's take a look at how to print this on two different sublimation printers. The first is a converted EcoTank printer and we'll click more settings. Again, we'll wanna make sure that it's 100%. So you don't want to fit it to the paper or fit it to the printable area because that could alter your sizes. If you do custom 100%, it should be exactly the size that you had it in Canva. And then print using system dialog box once again. And now it is the same as Word. So you would go to preferences and then matte, high quality, high speed off, mirror image on. Again, if you wanna do color correction, you could only do manual color correction and you would need to see my other video for that. Click okay and then print and you could print as many copies as you would like. Now, if we were gonna print using the F170 printer, we would pick it. Again, make sure it's 100% scale. Use system dialog box, then preferences. And again, we would pick rigid or textile, depending on what we were using. High quality, turn off bi-directional, make sure mirror's on. Then click okay, and it would print with the color correction already applied with the F170. And once again, let's take a look at using a template within Canva. So I'm going to upload this all over print. I'm gonna resize it where it will be large enough. So it's gonna to have to at least be nine and a half. So we're just gonna resize it like that by just clicking and dragging in the corners. Then I have my template. So I'm gonna add it. And again, it comes in in the wrong orientation. So we will need to rotate it 90 degrees. Then once it's rotated, again, it came in as the wrong size. So the template needs to be 8.3 by 9.5. So I resize it to 8.3 by 9.5. And then we can move the template around to where it fits onto our paper. And again, you can use the arrow buttons to do this. And then to crop the image, we just need to use these handles. So the handles on the sides will crop in. So I'm just gonna crop it in from this angle because I have it lined up with the template on all the other sides. And now my image is the same size as my template. I can check that by moving the template out of the way, clicking on my image, click on the corner, drag it a little bit, and we can see that it's 8.3 by 9.5, which is the exact same size as my template. So now I can get rid of the template and download this and print as before. And now I have a full size sublimation wrap and this happens to be for a 20 ounce tumbler, but you could use the same technique with other templates. Now, what if your template is curved in any of these cases? So in the case of Canva or in the case of Word, because we just did a square crop. If it's curved, what I recommend is printing a full sheet of your sublimation print. So I would just print this as a full sheet, making sure it's big enough for my template. Then I would print my template on a separate sheet of paper and just use scissors to cut both pieces of paper to the template size. So that way I didn't have to use a program at all to do those complicated carved templates. I can just cut it with scissors and know that I've gotten it right. There's a look at how to print out of Canva for sublimation. Our final program is Silhouette Studio. So this is the free version of Silhouette. So I'm gonna click open and then find my first design on my computer. Then we can say it opens as like a 12 by 12, but of course we don't want that. So the first thing we're gonna do is go over here and we are gonna change our media size to letter size because we only have an eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper and you might have eight and a half by 14. And if you have eight and a half by 14, you can click custom and add that here. So I'm just gonna go with eight and a half by 11, then click my image, pull in from the side and I can start resizing it. And you can see as I start resizing it, you can see on the left and on the bottom, the size that my image is. So now I can resize that. We've been using three by three. So we will just resize that to three. Now, if we want it to be exactly three inches, we can go up there to the top. So just put three inches by three inches in these boxes and click enter to resize to exactly what you need. You can also hit duplicate up here and duplicate the flower and fill the entire sheet with your sublimation prints. So as many as you would like to print, you would just add those onto your paper. Now let's say we're ready to print. We'll do file, print. So first I'm gonna choose the EcoTank printer that I converted for sublimation. Click preferences. Again, make sure it's matte paper setting, high quality, high speeds off, mirror images on. Click okay. I can choose my number of copies. And once again, if I wanna do color correction, I can only do manual color correction by doing that here under custom options. And then I would just print however many copies I would like. If I wanted to use my F170, I would pick that printer, then preferences. And again, I would pick rigid or textile, high quality, turn off bi-directional and make sure mirror's on, click okay, and then click print. 
Then let's talk about using a template. So I just opened my second design. Again, it opened as a 12 by 12 sheet. I also opened my template. Now it opened as a separate tab up here. So it opened over here as a separate tab. And this time it actually came in as the right size. So now I can right click, copy, go to the tab with my sublimation print on it, right click and paste. And now I have both of these on the same sheet. For this version, I could actually turn my paper in Silhouette Studio. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn it over here to the other orientation. So now I can see the black box is my template, the red box is my paper, and then this outside is my design. We can go ahead and resize this design some by using the corner pieces. However, we would need to crop at least some of this design in order to fit our template. And we'll click Modify over here in the right toolbar, and then pick both of these images and click Crop. Now this is the same size as your template. So it's the 8.3 by the 9.5 and it's ready to print. So now I can print in the same way as I did before and this is perfectly the size of my template. Now this same procedure will work whether your template is square or whether it's curved. So Silhouette Studio is a great option for printing for free with your sublimation printer. So now all three of those options work great However, I talked a little bit about color correction and how you would need to use like a manual color correction with those. If you wanted to use an ICC profile, you would need to get a little more in depth and maybe spend some money. So what I use to print to an ICC profile is Photoshop. That's my preferred method. And I have shown how to use that to print to your sublimation printer before. I will link to a, a couple of videos below so you can see how to do that with both a converted Epson EcoTank as well as the Epson F170. So if you have either one of those, and you're thinking about using Photoshop, drop down, use those links. Now, if you have that F170, you don't have to worry about ICC profiles and all that color correction. So you can use any of the three that I mentioned and not have to worry about that at all because it comes right in the Epson driver. If you've converted an Epson EcoTank and you're not happy with your colors and you find an ICC profile does that for you, you might need other options than the ones I've mentioned in order to get the colors that you're looking for out of your printer. So it just kind of depends on what printer you have and what color options you're looking for. Now, if you have a Sawgrass printer, I do recommend using the Sawgrass software to print to it. I recommend using their entire ecosystem in order to get the best results and the best print color. And once you buy that Sawgrass printer, you get that software anyway, so you might as well use it to print to your printer. So I hope that helps you learn a little bit more about printing to your sublimation printer using some free options that have nothing to do with Cricut Design Space. If it helped you, give us a thumbs up. If you have any questions about anything we've covered, drop down in the comment section, ask away. Other programs you want to see me cover in the future, drop down, comment section, give me a list. I might just cover some more in the future just for you. So thank you all so much for joining me today. If you haven't already, head on over to our YouTube channel, hit that subscribe button. We have videos just like this one every single week, and trust me, you don't want to miss any of those. I'll see you all next week with another great video. Bye-bye.